Welcome everyone. Today we will introduce local reduced order models and interpolation-based parameterization for an advection problem. In the previous Libram tutorial, we have built a specific parametric reduced order models. That was we have collected all the simulation data for many different training points for a Poisson problem and put them all together in a single matrix and applied orthogonalization by either QR factorization or singular value decomposition composition. Then the resultant basis data was used to predict solution for a new point within a parameter space, which was between pi and 1.2 pi for this particular problem. Please check out this previous Libram tutorial for recap. By the way, because one reduced basis covers the whole parameter space globally, we call it global reduced order model. Now, we immediately see some problems. First of all, adding three linearly independent solution vectors to the reduced basis was enough because the parameter space was pretty small. Furthermore, the Poisson problem was time independent, which will generate at most one solution vector per simulation. Therefore, the size of data will not be large. However, what if you are dealing with much larger parameter space? So you need to generate many training simulation data. What is even worse is if the problem is time dependent, then each simulation will generate more than one solution vector because its time step solutions are valuable data to use in training. All this implies that you need to incorporate many linearly independent solution vector in a global basis. Then the size of the global reduced basis becomes large, which makes it not a reduced basis anymore. This will make the reduced order model solution process computationally expensive. To remedy this issue, we introduce Introduce the concept of local reduced order model where local reduced basis is utilized. What do I mean by local reduced basis? For example, we will consider time-dependent advection problem. You can generate simulation data for a specific training point, say mu1. Because this is time-dependent problem, we can put each time step solution in a column vector and form a matrix. Then apply singular value decomposition and truncate left singular matrix to form a local reduced basis fees of 1. Then we plug this into a time-dependent governing equation, which is described by a system of ordinary differential equations. We replace solution vector u with fees of 1 times u sub hat, wherever the solution vector u appears in the governing equation. Then we get fees of 1 times time derivative of generalized coordinate variable u sub 1 hat equals the system matrix a sub 1 1 times v of 1 times u of 1 hat. This is an overdetermined system, so we need to close the system. One way of closing the system is to multiply both sides by v of 1 transpose. Note that v of 1 transpose times v of 1 is identity matrix because of orthogonality. So this term goes away and left with time derivative of generalized coordinate variable u of 1 hat equals v sub 1 transpose times the system matrix a sub 1 times v sub 1 times u sub 1 hat. Note that the dimension of v sub 1 transpose times a sub 1 times v sub 1 becomes a small square matrix a sub 1 hat. Therefore, this forms a local reduced order model for the training point mu sub 1. The size of the local reduced order model is guaranteed to be small which is a good thing because the solution process will be very fast. We can build a local reduced order model for its training point. For example, for mu2, mu3, and so on up to the last training point mu sub n. For each training point, we now have reduced order model whose size is very small, making each solution process very fast for each training point. By the way, what about a testing point that is not one of the training points? What if we want to find out the solution at that point? How can we use these trained local reduced order models to find out another local reduced order model? For a testing point, the answer is to use 
use interpolation. We have a few choices for interpolations. The first approach is to interpolate local reduced basis before we form local reduced system of equations. Let's say we want to obtain a solution for a testing point mu star. One can interpolate reduced basis p sub 1, p sub 2, and so on up to p sub n to obtain an interpolated reduced basis p sub star. Then one can use this interpolated basis to form a reduced system of equations. Note that this requires two distinct steps. One is to interpolate basis, and the other one is to perform matrix matrix multiplications to build the reduced system matrix. Unfortunately, the interpolation of basis involves full order model size. Furthermore, these matrix matrix multiplication also scales with the full order model size, so this can be computationally demanding. An alternative to the reduced basis interpolation approach is to interpolate reduced order operators. Here we assume that we have finished constructing local reduced order models for all the training points. Then one can interpolate reduced matrix operators a1 hat, a2 hat, and so on up to a sub n hat to obtain an interpolated reduced matrix operator a sub star hat. Then an interpolated system of equations can be solved. Note that each interpolation deals with smaller size of matrices than the reduced basis. Therefore, this interpolation approach is much more efficient than the reduced basis interpolation. We have applied local reduced order model approach to time-dependent advection problem. Initial condition u sub 0 is defined by product of two sine functions. Velocity function v is defined so that the spiral advection is induced. We set our parameter to be frequency of the sine function for the initial condition and set our parameter space to be between pi and 3 pi. For example, if we set the frequency to be pi, then we get this kind of advection response. If we set the frequency to be 3 pi, then we get this kind of advection response. As you can see, they have two very different responses, which will require many training data to obtain a good accuracy. For this particular problem, we have used 201 equally spaced training points between pi and 3 pi. Because each training point generates solutions of 500 time steps, the total number of column vectors for 201 training points is 500 times 201, that is 100,500. It is easy to see that the global reduced order model is not an option here because the size of the basis will be huge. However, the basis size of the local reduced order model does not increase as the training data size increases. Therefore, the local reduced order model is a way to go. We have used reduced basis size of 40 to build a local reduced order model for its training point. Then we apply the interpolation of reduced operator to parameterize. Here is a graph showing the accuracy of the local reduced order models. As you can see, all the relative errors are below 1%. Here is a graph showing the speed up achieved by the local reduced order models. The full order model takes in average about 10 to 20 seconds, while the reduced order model takes in average 10 to the negative 3 seconds, which implies a speed up of 10,000. This was possible due to the small size of individual local reduced order model. I hope that you find this reduced order model tutorial helpful. You can find the example of local reduced order models and the interpolation based parameterizations in our Libram webpage. You can download Libram and run these examples yourself. Please also check out the description below for more information. All right, this was it for today. I will see you again with another Libram tutorial in near future. I hope you will become a fan of reduced order model.